welcome to the Chicago Bears. Of course, he preceded you guys, Cole Komet, but this is one of the cooler things I've ever done. We've never had so many Chicago area products together on one team, and this is intentional by your general manager, Ryan Poles, and he says he feels the passion of which you grew up Bears fans will carry over to Sundays. Is he right on the money, TJ? I mean, it definitely helps. You know, I think, you know, growing up, you know, that's kind of what you dream of is coming here and um, playing for the hometown team and um, playing in front of your friends and family. So it's, uh, it's exciting for sure to be here. Everybody just jump in on the topic because mm -hmm. you've lived it. Yeah, I think, I think another aspect of it is just when you come back here, there's a comfort level of kind of knowing where everything is. You know, you're driving around, you know the towns around, around the city and all that stuff. So you're kind of familiar with the area, which also gives you a sense of comfort and uh, a sense of ease a little bit, you know, kind of before you, you start your NFL career. You're the vet, but your first cup of coffee here with the Bears uh, so far in training uh, off-season program, how does it feel to put on that uniform? Yeah, it feels good. Um, just to see on the helmet and then seeing the bear on the floor every day when you walk in, I think that is like what's most special to me. Just come, being from here and everything, growing up, knowing the bears, I think you just understand the passion and the excitement that everyone around here has for them and how big a part of the city kind of this, this team is. So it's definitely like an honor, an extra honor. A lot of pride playing for this team. Um, and I think it brings all of our families, you know, a lot of pride and joy to be able to see our names on this specific jersey. Um, and yeah, obviously, you know, a lot of these guys have played a lot and, you know, I look up to that and, and hope I can do it in the future. So who'd you guys want to be? I'll start with you. Who'd, who'd you want to be back in the day when you were a little kid? You know, who'd you want to be? Who are you going to be? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're first. You're I mean, yeah. Yeah. I did, I did. I can move like him too. Yeah. I can get out and yeah. move. It. No, nah, but uh, yeah, and then, I mean, and then you turned six. You realized you were putting your hand in. The I got dirt a little too beefy. Yeah. I kind of moved along. I liked Evan Hester, then I got heavier. I liked yeah. Erlacher, then I got heavier. So it's been a natural progression. But yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, mine was Devin Hester. I think <laughs> you always looked at Devin Hester. He had the 23 jersey. Uh, Erlacher was another guy I had. Um, yeah. So I mean, those are you know just the those are the guys that you really looked after, and um, obviously just a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone would be lying if they didn't say Devin Hester, but, you know, uh, had the jersey and all that. Um, but Briggs, to me, like, growing up was like the, you know, he was like the, the rock. So he was like the guy that, that I really looked at. Him and uh, Mike Brown, I thought, were, were nasty back in the day. I'm going to go with Brian Urlacher and Rex Grossman. Ooh. Yeah, keep sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy Rexy. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was his nickname. I mean, I think the traditional Devin Hester, Brian Urlacher, of course, and then I'm going to go with Johnny Knox. Love Johnny Ooh. Knox growing up. Big Johnny Knox. Yeah, fan. yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? Keep dreaming. Growing up, it was like you wanted to be a receiver. You know, I don't know why. I just liked Johnny Knox a lot. And, uh, like his speed. He was. He was, he was great. Obviously, you know, end, career ended in a bad way, but, you know, for, for quite a few, few years there, he was – he was the man. Yeah, he was awesome. Hall of Famers that grew up in the Chicago area that played here. So obviously George Hallis is, is one of them. Crane High School. You got Dick Butkus at CBS, Hall of Famer. You got Bill George, uh, George Connor. Uh, you got Gary Fensick out in Barrington. I mean, we can go on and on and on. So to have your names be associated with that and hopefully you have long careers here, um, what does that mean when you used to root for all these guys back in the day? Well, it's just unbelievable. I think, you know, for myself, my dad played on the team, obviously, uh, you know, back in the in the early 90s. And, um, you know, all the guys that he talked about with the 85 team and, and up till now, um, it's just unbelievable to kind of be part of that tradition. And uh, we were talking about one day how all the teams are linked when you go back. You know, there's always a guy that played with one guy who played with another guy, and it, and it goes all the way up till now. And that's pretty cool to be, you know, part of that tradition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, no, I mean, you know, growing up, you – just kind of like Cole's talking about, it's like you, you grow up watching a lot of these games, at least for me, you know, we've, we've seen a lot, a lot of Bears football in my day. So uh, to be a part of it, to be in the locker room and uh, to have guys who also kind of understand it a little bit more as well helps a lot. So I would just go back to the, the logo and the uniform. You grow up, you're, you're wearing whether it's a Brian Urlacher jersey or something. You have like those little mini helmets on when you're a kid and now it's like real life and it's so surreal. And then to be alongside, you know, a great group of guys is is awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think every kid kind of, especially, I don't know, us growing up kind of had that one little dream growing up for like maybe a second, maybe a little, and now to, 
you know, to live it and us five be here right now, um, com competing and trying to win for this organization is definitely, it's a great feeling. For you, I, my heart breaks because you got, I think, uh, 48 snaps in the preseason opener last year against Kansas City and then you got injured, but you still got to go through that tunnel and now you're hoping to have a long career here. Yeah, obviously disappointed about last season and I think, you know, for it to happen on, on that type of day where it's my first first time putting on that jersey going out and onto the stadium um you know with all my family all my friends there to just to watch it for the first time for that to happen that was tough um but now it's behind and uh yeah just looking forward to, to moving forward so one other question i mean I, I i had players on the wall i had you know the little football helmets i was a football nut did you guys have this kind of stuff uh growing up on your walls pennants did you have Bears memorabilia? Do you still have it in boxes? Did you collect football cards? Rob? I got, I got um, let's see, Gail Sayers, Brian Urlacher, game worn jersey. So I went Ooh. to one of his signings. Yeah, yeah, Gail Sayers, and then um, I probably got a bunch of other little stuff. But yeah, I was a I was a Chicago fiend mm, for sure. That's a good one. I got a I had a little po it was like a Monsters of the Midway poster that that I had that I that I really liked. Um, had some football cards footballs, jerseys, so yeah, I had a good amount of stuff. Yeah, the classic, you know, the couple jerseys, um, actually got like, a Halloween picture, it's kind of wild to look back at, but I'm like fully uniformed, like I got like the pants with the orange stripe, <laughs> yeah. like man, that's, so that's wild a little bit, yeah. so uh, I got, I had the full uniform for sure. Oh, yeah. Jerseys, I mean, fake helmet, everything, yeah. Yeah, Halloween, stuff it like that. was real. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I wasn't that, yeah, I, mine was fake, mine was a little plastic one. Um, yeah, pennants and stuff, Yeah, very cool. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm the same as them. Uh, I had a Brian Urlacher fat head on the wall, oh, which yeah, lasted yeah, about, yeah. lasted about 15 years. I think it fell off like two years ago, but that was a great one, yeah. So did you guys, when you, when these guys come around, they'll, they'll come around at training camp, the, the, the veteran players that have. Uh, mark, mark their path here and left a mark on this organization. Do you guys still get a charge out of it? Because now you are professional football players earning paychecks and trying to carve out your own path in your career, but do you still get some butterflies about that, seeing the guys come around? Yeah, I saw Charles Tillman the other day, and, and, and I had met him before, but just like seeing him around is, is so cool. And then uh, I was at a, a Notre Dame football practice, and uh, Brian Urlacher's kids getting recruited by ND and I saw him you know at, at school and I was like holy crap that's, that's Brian Urlacher you know so I talked to him for like 15-20 minutes and it was just, it's it's just so cool to see those guys that you you know grew up with and uh, kind of be able to talk to them and, and relate to them a little bit as well so it's been it's been pretty cool yeah I mean I think you know I haven't really seen you know a lot of them I'm right. sure you know during camp uh, but I know that Charles Tillman was here and I saw him like around the building and one he's a lot bigger than I thought he was Oh, it's a big dude, so no, but I'm, I'm excited for him Long to be around. Yeah, it's that a, peanut punch is real. Yeah. I think it's kind of just like when you're in middle school and you see the high school kids, and when you're in high school, you see the college kids. So yeah. I think then just kind of the legacy of the team, you growing up and seeing them, you know, play and on TV and, uh, you know, the pride that they had for the city and just try to emulate that. And you, you know, you're at linebacker, you at the, at the NFL level, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, it's, I think it's definitely pretty neat, and I think just seeing them, but also just the amount of them. Like Tillman, I think he's been here like three times since I've been here. You know, them coming back, I think it just shows kind of, you know, still years on, they still have like a passion for this team and um, passion for this organization. Yeah, I, to touch on what Jack said, like when, when Pino Tillman came and talked to us, like, I was ready to run through a brick wall after that. Like, I, I love hearing him talk and <laughs> hear the passion he's oh, still yeah. got for, for the organization <laughs> and the, and the city. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks, <laughs> Hey, Jimbo Covert, the Hall of Fame left tackle, was out here to practice. Yeah. I got a kick out of it. It was we were talking technique and what he did back in the day. And he goes, oh, this is a new drill. This is interesting. And, you know, it, these guys love it. They, they stay here. They develop families here. And they, they are remaining Bears fans to this day. So I, I think that's one unique thing about this organization. It's a great place to raise a family, obviously, here in Chicago. High school football. We're going to go around the horn here. What it meant to you here in the IHSA level, all five of you very successful in it for your respective schools. Uh, I'm a Hersey High grad. As you can tell, this is circa 1977. Let's go. And, you know, Cole, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but Viator and Hersey were uh, – 
arch enemies. And I don't know, this is, a, this is my buddy Durson Dermis's football jersey from <laughs> 1980. That's unbelievable. Uh, is it making you sweat? I mean, did, did you guys play Hersey, or did you were they out of the rotation? What's the story? Uh, we never played Hersey. You never, never. played never Hersey? Never practiced against them. We did really? not prospect. All right, we all right. BG'd, but we never did Hersey. What it was like, what it meant to you. And, and I can only imagine what it would have been like to be there at these, at these games or playing these games on a Friday night, getting ready for a high school football game. I mean, wow. I didn't get that opportunity. Yeah. Well, I think it's the last time, I don't, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think it's the last time where you're truly, everybody is truly playing for the love of the game because once you get to college and, and the pro level, it, there's a lot of business involved on, on all levels. So um, it's the last time everyone's just in it to have fun. And uh, there's just a, a joy and love for the game. And, you know, that's kind of where you develop the love for it and the bond that you have with those guys. I mean, I'm still really good friends with all my high school teammates. So. Um, yeah, that's kind of where your love of football, I think, really sparks and starts, and uh, and it just kind of has continued on. Yeah, um, and kind of going off what Cole said, I think, like, for me, like, I remember a lot of those games just because, like, you're truly playing for, like, your school, and you're, um, you know, you look up in the stands, you see your family and, and all that, just the whole the whole school there watching. Um, you take a lot of pride. Quarterback back in the day, by the oh, way. Yeah. Um, 17 and 3 as a starter. Just kind of had to throw that out really? there. Did you know that, fellas? I did not know that. It's kind of beat okay. actually St. Vider my junior year in the playoffs, but um, oh, yeah. lost yeah. after that. But uh, wow. no, you, you just take a lot of pride. You take a lot of pride playing that. <laughs> now, we know so Rob awesome. was a quarterback. Yeah, that's what I heard. School record, 5,000 yards throwing the football. <laughs> Five and 13 is a starter, though. <laughs> Seven does offense. Seven does offense. Um, I would say, like, the Friday, the Fridays, like, during school, wearing your jersey, like, throughout the day, and then, like, walking out to the band, just, like, like real, like, you know, childhood, like, yeah. growing up and just. Never forget it. Yeah, backyard football. Yeah, I mean, I think it's also the last time that you kind of play with the kids that you grew up playing with, like in the in the lower levels too, like um, like the TCYFL is what like we played in. So it's your last time kind of playing with like your childhood friends. And yeah, I mean, I just, that's some of like the best memories that I've had uh, in football and even to this day. And like Cole said, I mean, still some of my best friends to this day. And uh, yeah. 2017 state playoffs. Yeah, lost state championship, overtime. That close. Bang. Overtime. Hey, thank you. hey jo Joniak, thanks for bringing that up right now. <laughs> uh, Batavia? Yeah, good memory. Still hurts? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> you don't get to win a lot of championships in football, you know? And <laughs> How about the Red Devils? Oh, the Red Devils. Those are the boys. Um, Ooh, the boys. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's the best crew of people, uh, some of my best friends to this day. Um, you know, you just go out there and lay it all on the line. Um, and just had a blast doing it. Some of the best memories, like all of them said. And the crazy thing, even, you know, we can talk about Texas football and Florida, and obviously it's, it's crazy. It's, it's a religion there, but you don't turn your back on the state of Illinois. You can't Chicago football. Yeah, you can't. No, you can't. I mean, Chicago it's, area it's, football. And he, I mean, even that's, it's, it's yeah. unbelievable. It's really There's good. All, every single week yeah. of the season, and I always point them out if they're on, on the other team, I'll say, hey, this is the, the, the history of that player. And yeah. more and more every year, you're getting more and more guys. Absolutely. And yeah. so, but the idea of Friday Night Lights for your town, and I was just there the other day, you know, that, that place comes to watch Hinsdale Central, okay? I'm sure they're all out watching your games, and that means something to the community. Did it feel like almost like it's a superpower that you got that you bring people together at that high school level when you guys were all stars for your high schools? Yeah, I mean, seeing seeing the whole you know city or little city, town, suburb, yeah. whatever you want to call it, seeing them all come together was awesome, um, and seeing really the bonds between all the families grow because. Of, like Jack said, we've been playing together for so many years. Um, so seeing everyone kind of rally around the team, um, you know, that was awesome. That's what it's all about, though. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was younger in, like, elementary school, middle school, going to the Friday Night Light games and, and uh, not even really watching the game, just going to hang out with everybody. But it was completely packed, you know, a lot of energy for the team. And, um, yeah, you kind of always wanted to just be that. You know, you never really thought that there could have been anything past that. You were like, oh, that's the goal right there. And, um, 20 miles from the Wisconsin border. Your man here from McHenry. What was that like on Friday nights? Um, yeah, Tell me like, there wasn't a lot of green and gold in the stands. 
I mean, yeah, half and half. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I would say just like you know the the window paint on like the storefronts, like oh, the yeah. little oh, town geez, vibe. Right yeah, there. you know, shut down Green Street before the game and homecoming week. <laughs> Green Street, <laughs> Green Street. Um, yeah, just kind of that little small farm town vibe. And it was just cool that you know have the little town behind you, supporting energy, and just kind of putting that into the into the field. How about Lakes Community? <laughs> yeah, um, it's uh, I mean kind of what everyone's saying. It's just like the the pride you feel for um, you know playing for the school and the town, and you know growing up. That's like that's all you all you looked at was like the high school kids like going out there and under the lights, um, just like waiting for your turn. So when it finally happened, you it was it was everything out there with your your best friends and um, just having a ball, man. And East Suburban Catholic League, one of the better leagues around that it you is, start in there, buddy. Yeah. Did you know he was rushing the passer, too? And yeah. I also found yeah, out boy. you volunteered, I believe, for a playoff game to put you on punt block? I was, I was, yeah. I was, I was, nice. I was, I was long snapping. I was the punt what returner. Resume, man. What a resume, man. Dude, <laughs> special, I, I, special, special teams, teams warrior. Special teams warrior. <laughs> special teams warrior. Yeah, more you can do. More you can do. Uh, yeah, ESCC, I, now it's different. Now it's, they're yeah. all, they're all together, but, um. Yeah, I mean, at the time, you know, the Julia Catholics were really good. Notre Dame, college prep. Um, so, yeah, there were some, some good teams in there, and, um, you know, everyone would come out for those games. So it was a lot of fun. All right, if I were, yeah, I like to ask this question no matter what, but for this purpose, I think it's a good one. If you were, what, 14 or 15 years old when you are a freshman in high school, what would you tell that 14 or 15-year-old now that you're here trying mm -hmm. to be an NFL veteran player? And you guys all chime in. We'll start with Doug. Um, what would you tell your 14 or 15 year old self? That's a, tough, that's a tough question. I would probably, I mean, honestly, I'd just tell myself to put my head down and keep grinding. Um, that's kind of something that I've always kind of hung my hat on, um, playing offensive line, um, being selfless and just for the team. Um, don't get crazy with it. There's no secret formula. Just, just keep working hard. Yeah, I mean, kind of going off what Doug said, but then just, just keep having fun with it you know don't uh don't ever lose that passion for the game and um you know always have fun while you're out there and you know with the guys yeah just be yourself and be confident just play with swagger and just have fun yeah i mean similar i think just the the love of, of this game that we play like you're playing it every day like you're still a kid in the backyard and just um, at least for me that's kind of you know what kept me going was just how much i enjoy being out here with guys who are working towards the same goal and um that's really helped me a lot I think just enjoy the moment, you know. Um, those those four years in high school go quick, and for me, it's still a lot of my best sport memories are in high school. Um, you know, and I've done a lot since then, but um, you, you can't. Those memories just unbelievable. So just take it all in while, while you're there. Somebody mentioned homecoming here. Any of you guys on the homecoming or prom courts in your high school lives? TJ, never. Nope. Starting quarterback. Long story. Okay, oh, we have time. Oh, oh, we have time. We're all about storytelling. No, you, you, you have like two homecomings because we had two campuses. You know, the high school girl, you know, she went to the other one. So I, I neglected the homecoming court to go to her homecoming. Okay. Oh, I'm, a good, I'm a good guy, dude. Selfless, super selfless, dude. Super selfless. <laughs> Uh, back in the day, yeah. Oh, uh, dude, I already know Cole's answer. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> homecoming or prom? Yeah. I, I think you can find Cole's that. Cole's like, I was homecoming king, uh, prom huh? king. I think you can uh, find that out for yourself. Oh, you I can do research on that, all right? No. <laughs> I was, yeah, one year, one year. Sophomore year, yeah. I was on the court. Homecoming or prom? Homecoming. Okay. Homecoming. Were you yeah. king? No, no, no. Any no. kings? No. Jack was king. <laughs> he won't admit it. He was the king. I love it. I don't know if I was king. I know I was, I was Prince. I was Prince. Prince Jack, dude. Prince. What does that even mean? I, I don't know, man. It was, it was, they didn't want to, everyone had a win. That is ridiculous. Yearbooks. Uh, anything you, if I were to find your yearbooks, what was said about you guys about off the field? Anything, anything, you know, were you the, were you the most likely to blank, blank, blank? Do you guys remember anything from your high school yearbook? Jeez. Most likely it'd be on ESPN. Check that box. Wow. All right, <laughs> there you go. Nice brag, nice brag, nice, nice brag. Humble, humble, humble. Yeah. humble I, was, uh, I was most likely to be a sports athlete, so a professional sports go. athlete. So yeah. I think I was yeah. sports as well. Yeah. 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 Across the board? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. I think I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Most don't like, know. Most, hey, that most likely to anything, have man. a Brian Urlacher fat look, fat head in his, That's his me. apartment. That's me. Oh, God, you guys Prince Jack, dude. Most, <laughs> I have said it. most impactful person related to football 
that is a big reason from your high school days or just growing up here period that have helped you get here? We'll start with TJ. So we're we talking like from our high school or just doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, I mean, I think, you know, growing up, I had a lot of like really good coaches who um, just taught me the fundamentals of the game and taught me that, you know, first and foremost, you got to have fun to, to truly keep pushing yourself. And um, that's something I really leaned on. But I think my dad has been everything for me in terms of um, sports in general. And, you know, his motto was just always that no one's going to outwork you. And that's something that, you know, helped me get to where I am today. So it's definitely a um, combination of both for sure. Yeah, I would definitely say, obviously, my dad just obviously starting young from putting a football in my hand, all that. But I would say my high school uh, quarterback coach, Kevin Brockway, he was just, you know, fresh out of college, came back and coached the high school and just like gave me the utmost confidence to just go out there and just throw it around and just run around and just have a good time. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot of people that kind of help you along the way. I mean, even like playing younger days, like friends' dads, you know, teaching you how to play football because they were the coaches. But I think one <coughs> in particular would be uh, my high school coach, Dave Prophet, uh, kind of just first one to really, really believe in me and, you know, push me. So. Um, <clears throat> I would say my dad as well, growing up coaching me. Um, and then I would also say uh, one of my high school coaches, Coach Bill Duffy. Hopefully he's watching this. He sees this. That'd be awesome. But he he woke up. He trained me. <laughs> he trained me every every morning at 6 a.m. before school started. Um, you know, didn't expect anything from me. Just would wake up and and take me through that. And you know, I think he's really one of the main reasons why I'm here. He taught me taught me a ton about about life, about being a man. Um, and yeah, he's a huge reason why I'm here. Yeah, for me, it's my dad. Um, it's a family business. Yeah, it really is. Um, oh, shoot. I mean, I just remember me and my brother going down in our basement at the time. We had all the storage, and my dad never talked about the football stuff and never wanted to put pressure on us to do anything, but we'd always go through the, the bins that my mom had in storage of the newspaper clippings and when he was in high school, college, and then getting drafted and, and you know, being here. Um, and we'd always read those things. and you know, dream of being just like that. And uh, it's been pretty cool to kind of follow his footsteps in that regard. One of the cool things about all five of you guys, you all landed at Midwest Colleges too. So, mm -hmm. and now you're here. I mean, it's like, what a great place to be, right? We all have that Midwest, Midwestern value and work ethic in us. I, I put myself in that category too. I'm just not a football player. But how important was that for you guys? I mean, Big Ten to Indiana State, I know maybe you guys were thinking of other schools. I think you wanted to go to Florida Atlantic initially. Is that right? Well, Florida Atlantic. <clears throat> that was that was my know things about story. that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell a story here. <laughs> Why not? Um, so yeah, that was one of the the better offers. I really liked our offensive the offensive line coach there at the time, um, and that was before you know Illinois had kind of offered me, but the moment they did, both my parents went to Illinois. So in the back of my head, I always knew. Um, and hoped that that would come. Didn't know if it was going to come, but it ended up uh, happening, and, yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> nice. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're talking about, what, Midwest? Yeah, Midwest. Yeah, Midwest. Yeah. Why did you choose Notre Dame? Uh, yeah, well, for me, why did I choose Notre Dame? Good question, Jack. Um, for me, it was just a seamless fit from where I went to high school to, you know, going there and – I just think that, like we were talking about Midwest, like there's a lot of like-minded people. You know, we all we all kind of think the same way, you know, to a degree. And and, and Jeff kind of like you said that work ethic. So I think it all just kind of matches up. And uh, I thought it I th thought it worked out pretty well for me. Yeah, um, for me it was first I was committed to um, Western Michigan, and it was honestly at the time it was like just trying to go to you know whoever wanted me. Um, you know, I was a decent quarterback, but maybe not that great. I didn't have a ton of offers or anything like that, but. <laughs> Um, Wisconsin came in like a month before signing day and it was it was quick you know like close to home and um, just loved it there you know felt like a, a true kind of family thing which you know being from kind of where we're from that's kind of what attracts you to, to places as well so and then you know, I obviously got to be with uh, Sanborn as a young pup Prince Prince Sanborn <laughs> as, as oh, at that pup. time probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, like TJ said just kind of going wherever you're like wanted and just trying to scrape by and get a scholarship um, yeah, I thought I was going to be the next Cam Newton, so that didn't work out. So. <laughs> yeah, but I'm here now, so we're good. We're good. We're good. The veteran of the group at 29.
with a lot of experience. He's played the Bears 10 times, five wow. at Soldier Field, and uh, two touchdowns. He had a really good game in 2020 against us. Remember the 39-yard catch and run touchdown? Mm -hmm. There you go. That's Rob's story. Jack, same thing? I mean, yeah. I, oh, see, I don't have to speak for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I was oh, fortunate yeah. enough to have some offers coming out and that, but I knew I wanted to stay around around the Midwest, around home, and uh, you know, fell in love with Wisconsin. It's pretty close. Uh, TJ was up there turning it into LBU with all the boys mm. up there, and um, mm. so I thought it was a nice fit, and uh, yeah, super glad of the decision. What star recruit were you for? Who were you? Or we, no, I asked, no, I asked you. You were, you were four. high, I remember. You were four, yeah. yeah. You were like a four or five. Like a big right? deal. Were, you, were you a four? No, I, I, think no, I, I asked two. first, so let's see. <laughs> <laughs> you were zero? Zero. 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 Wow. Two. Two. <laughs> Strong two. Depending on the site. What were you, a five? Depending on the site, four. Four or five. No, I wasn't five. Four. Well, that brings up another great question. There's no linear path to no. get here. And yeah. if anybody thinks that you five guys you know, we're just ordained because of your athleticism, size, and work ethic. No way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to start with Rob on this one because not many Indiana State guys in the NFL for number one, right? So just tell us that path and how many things had to happen for you to get here. Yeah, so my first three, two years of college, I was a quarterback, redshirt, then one year quarterback, then played the last three years at receiver, played really well. Um, set all the records there for receiving and then didn't play tight end until I got to the league and then just kind of just figured it out. That's kind of how I just do my work ethic, just figure it out and just keep working and, you know, when you just keep grinding, you know, stuff will fall into place. An undrafted player, uh, that, never, that never leaves a chip on the shoulder. I mean, you guys just got to figure it out, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, to me, it really didn't matter. Um, you know, obviously, <laughs> it would have been nice to go first round or something like that, but I didn't. Um, but it really didn't matter, you know, when I went. I just wanted to get somewhere with an opportunity. And um, you know, I kind of just went back to, you know, what got me there. And it was just, just hard work and um, being ready when the opportunity comes. And I think that's something in this league that's so valuable because those opportunities come and go so quick, and you got to be ready to take advantage of them. Same path. Yeah, very similar path. Um, and yeah, very similar to what he said. Uh, just come in, work, um, do your job, you know, do your handle your business uh, in the right way, and have fun with it. Two draft picks right here. The privileged. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's why we're in the back. Short. That's why we're in the back over here. Yeah, the privilege. Yeah. Um, I guess what I'd say that is like, I was kind of my dad was a guy that was always getting cut and this and that. So that was always kind of preached to me. And then my uncle was was very similar in in that regard, moving team to team and scraping to make the team all the time. So. It's always kind of preached to have that, you know, that undrafted mindset. Like you, you have to have that every day. Just when you come out here, you can't take any day for granted. And um, there's always guys coming after you for your job. There's always guys coming up that that want your spot, and you got to go earn it every day. Yeah, um, I mean, I I would agree. I think like you know, I think being the guy who wasn't always the biggest, wasn't always the strongest, didn't have the greatest measurables. I think that type of thing put a chip on my shoulder because I've heard heard it from so many people. Um, that I couldn't play the position that I wanted to play or, you know, I, w I could only cap out at this level because of, you know, the size and height and all that thing. Um, but, yeah, I think just ignoring all of that, if, if anything, using it as fuel for your fire um, and just continuing to work hard and, and, yeah. Start with TJ. Just roll with it. First time out of the tunnel at Soldier Field since you've all been there and played there, even though you're in different uniforms. Do you remember the moment? Did it give you chills? Were you revved up beyond just knowing what the game plan was for that day? Take me there. Yeah, um, last year was the, the first time I played here. Um, so, you know, I had a bunch, I think we had like 35 tickets or something, something like that. So a lot of people in the stands that, you know, we've been there before, but, you know, obviously watching Bears games growing up. And then one, it was cold. So I was like, yeah, we're, we're right at home uh, coming out. So it, it's just emotional, you know, at first and then, um, run out in the field and you know trying to just get your job done the best of your ability but it's it's what you dream of for sure yeah I came out of the tunnel and my uh one of my high school best friends he has season tickets and he was like right on the tunnel so I got to you know high five him on the way out and then uh got the opening uh tackle on the kickoff you know nice. it was just a cool experience you know that uh 
yeah, it all just came around full circle. Despite the fact you guys may or may not know, you wore a Brett Favre jersey at the age of three, and there's pictures all over that. Remember, remember? Yeah, at a Packers birthday party at three years old. My neighbors. <laughs> were, he knows more about himself, <laughs> I think. My, neighbor, my neighbors, my neighbors were Packers fans, and they bamboozled me into <laughs> doing it. But I was a Bears fan. You're a bear. Bear. You're a bear. Yeah, I mean, definitely <laughs> surreal. Um, a moment you never forget. I mean, just to think about like how many people that you know that were like there. It's like you definitely know how big like the passion is around. Yeah, I, I agree with Jack. Uh, that was the coolest, coolest moment ever. Fighting to get back to that. You'll get there. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, th I just remember all my friends and family being there and it's just an unbelievable moment just to, that you can kind of share with everybody and you know, everybody wants to talk about afterwards. So um, really cool experience that I'll never forget. All right, lastly, you got five bears right here. What would you tell your teammates if we were, if they were, if you guys were sitting in front of them right now, all five of you? I'm sure they'd be cracking jokes and whatnot. But you're five homegrown bears, ready to get this franchise continuing heading in the right direction. What's that feel like? Do you take that as a honor, a privilege, a mission? Start with TJ and go across the board. You know, I think just understanding what um, what this team means to the city and, and the state and um, realizing that there's a lot of people that, you know, are out there are supporting us. And, you know, for us, you know, first and foremost, this is this is the NFL and we want to be, you know, as great as we can. We want to get to that end goal. But it starts with, you know, what we're doing right now and just getting to know each other, having fun out there and um, putting it on the line every single day for these guys. Yeah, I don't think honestly you have to say much of the group of guys that we have in this locker room. Um, just by the judge of character and being around them this off season. Um, you know, we got go-getters, workers, people who take pride in their work. So just kind of motivating and continuing to just kind of get behind those kind of guys and just lift them up and keep going. Um, I think the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, I mean, I think like very similar to them. I mean, I think in the locker room, you know, you got a lot of guys that want to win and you know want to win now. And I'm a big Chicago sports fan too, so Cubs, Blackhawks and I mean I always think about when they won 2016 you know the Hawks dynasty and what that meant to the city and then uh, you know just imagine what the Bears would mean. Yeah I think I think Rob hit the, hit the nail on the head. I got nothing else to add. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, think he, yeah. I, yeah I guess what I would say just the uh, the opportunity here to leave your legacy forever. Um, you know, at, you know, obviously, with, with, uh, what Jack was saying, the Cubs are a big deal. The, you know, the Blackhawks are a big deal. Bulls are, a big, but like this is a football town, and uh, you win here, you'll you'll live on forever, and that's real. I mean, you see those '85 guys, like they do what, like they can go wherever they want, and it's they are taken care of, and that's something that I don't think happens in every other city. So um, you just have an opportunity here to leave a legacy, and uh, that's something that we're all chasing. Yeah, 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 yeah.